Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Houston Community College's virtual 2021 State of the College event. My name is Todd Duplantis, Director of HCC TV Communications, and I'll be your MC this morning. First, I'd like to acknowledge that we've all been through a lot lately with the pandemic and the winter storm that devastated our area in mid-February. I sincerely hope that you and yours are back to normal with full power water and that your repairs have been completed or on track to be repaired. Now I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Pamela Velasquez, a recipient of the David and Jean Wiley Foundation Scholarship while a student at HCC, and she is now enrolled at UH Downtown. Pamela. Hello, my name is Pamela Velasquez, and I'm so pleased to welcome our viewers to the 2021 HCC Virtual State of the College. I'm honored to be a part of today's program and share my story. I was one of the recipients for the David and Jean Wiley Foundation Scholarship. I currently work in the Foundation Department and have heard many incredible stories of students who are going through many struggles but still find a way to stay in school through the amazing scholarships that we offer. Both of my parents are of Mexican descent and I was born and raised in Houston. My mom has always been a stay-at-home mom taking care of my sister and I while my dad worked to provide for us. I cannot thank my parents enough for being there for me, and I know they are proud of all my academic accomplishments. When I graduated high school, I knew they were expecting me to go to college to become a lawyer or a nurse. I enrolled at Houston Community College to take a few classes. My dad worked long hours in the heat, the cold, the rain, just so he could help me pay for my classes. I decided to leave school and start working to help out my parents. I knew they would be disappointed, but I wanted to help. Years went by and I had a daughter. In the back of my mind, I always wanted to go back to school, but I didn't think I could do it after having a kid. I became a single mother and I knew I had to do better for my daughter. I enrolled in one or two classes because I couldn't afford more. Long story short, during these past few years, I got married, had another baby girl, and I was finally on the track I should have been on a long time ago. I was so fortunate to know about the foundation and blessed to be able to finish school because of the scholarships that they provide. I want to show my girls that you can accomplish anything you want and I want to be a role model for them and support them when they reach this journey. I want to make my parents proud of me when they see me walk across the stage. With the support of my parents, husband and my daughters, and of course with the help of the David and Jean Wiley Scholarship, I was able to accomplish one of my goals this past summer and graduated with my associate's degree. I am currently enrolled at the University of Houston downtown, where I am studying social work and pursuing my dream to help others. HCC gave me my start on my educational journey. Thank you again to the HCC Foundation and the many generous community members who help support the amazing scholarships the Foundation provides for the students here at HCC. You help open doors to opportunities for so many students, including me. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela. Truly inspiring. I'd now like to welcome HCC's board chair, Robert Glazer, District 5. Thank you, Todd. We are grateful to each of you for joining us virtually this morning. I am honored to serve as HCC's board chair as we celebrate Houston Community College's 50th anniversary of being deep in the heart of Houston. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I want to acknowledge how grateful we are to Chancellor Maldonado, the leadership team, the faculty, and staff for their commitment and unwavering dedication to our students during these unprecedented times. The power of collaboration is seen not only in our team's ability to meet the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic, but also those presented by the recent winter storm. We will continue to work together to navigate whatever the new normal looks like as we strive to ensure the success of each student we serve. In this ever-changing world, we are consistently pushing our organization to do all we can to prepare students and support our city. Our comprehensive strategic framework, Embracing Houston's Future, is our strategy which is grounded in the mission, vision, and strategic priorities of the College of Houstonians. Chancellor Maldonado will provide highlights of the plan during his remarks. I want to acknowledge my fellow trustees who contribute to the advancement of HCC and each of their communities profoundly. They are elected officials who give their time and talents assisting students, supporting our college, and moving our city and communities forward. 
Vice Chair, Dr. Reagan Flowers, District 4. Secretary, Dr. Cynthia Linton Gary, District 7. Monica Flores Reichardt, District 1. Rhonda Skillern Jones, District 2. Dr. Adriana Tamez, District 3. Dr. John P. Hansen, District 6. Eva Laredo, District 8. And Dr. Prieta Vandible Stallworth, District 9. Many thanks to my colleagues for your continued support and partnership. We have accomplished a lot with and for our community, and together we will continue as we celebrate our 50th year serving Houston. And we look forward to 50 more years of powering our workforce and empowering our communities through both good times as well as challenges as we did during February winter storm. Our institution will continue to ensure that future generations are ready to meet the economic needs of our society. Thank you, Trustee Glazer. Now I would like to welcome our Chancellor, Dr. Cesar Maldonado, who will share his updates on the changes, pivots, and progress across the institution since our event last year. Thank you, Todd. Before I begin my remarks, I'd like to acknowledge all of those who have done so much for our institution. You, community and business leaders, educational partners, our Board of Trustees and everyone attending this virtual event have contributed to the success of Houston's Community College. And we're honored to have each of you join us for this first-of-a-kind HCC virtual format today. Last year's State of the College event was held in person just days before the pandemic came upon our great city. I remember it well as we grappled with fist and elbow bumps back on March 6th of 2020, a behavior that is now normal. We have all been through so much since our last State of the College, but I know we are emerging stronger and more resilient. And we are truly grateful for the hope the COVID-19 vaccines give us all. It's almost unreal that we had to reschedule this year's virtual State of the College due to the devastating impact of the February winter storm. Along with everyone in Houston, our faculty, staff, and students suffered loss and hardship during the winter storm. We surveyed our students after the storm and 51% were dealing with damages to their homes. We also reached out to our faculty and staff and 45% indicated they had damage to their homes from winter storm URI. Our campuses were also impacted with 60% of our buildings needing some amount of repairs. Working jointly, the ACC Foundation and the College President's Council mobilized quickly to provide $25,000 from its Disaster Relief Fund to help support ACC employees impacted by the storm. The Foundation is also matching donations to the Storm Emergency Fund up to an additional $25,000 to assist students, faculty, and staff who were impacted. You know, I'm so proud of the HCC Foundation and the entire HCC community who rally in our time of need, eagles helping eagles. And through it all, HCC is here to help rebuild Houston. We train our city's electricians, plumbers, construction workers through a variety of programs and apprenticeships. Our horticulture program is also a vital way that we are supporting the city's recovery back to the beautiful green Houston. HCC will always be here to train the vital workforce to keep Houston thriving and growing. When HCC was first challenged by COVID-19, we immediately jumped to implement new strategies like Next Learning, which adjusted the way HCC delivers instruction, prioritizing the health and safety of our community while also providing flexibility for students to choose how they want to learn, online, on campus, or both. And of course, this was possible only because of the response of our phenomenal faculty quickly shifting to remote modality, converting nearly 6,900 class sections to online format over the 2020 spring break. The first thing we did in March 2020 was adopt guiding principles for our COVID-19 related decisions. And no one knows for sure how long we'll need to navigate the evolving new normal, but for now, it's a fact of life. 
Everyone we know has been impacted. Our students, faculty and staff, our classrooms, the way we gather, even the way we educate. Like so many of our peers across the country and the world, we've had to significantly change the way we work. Now the silver lining is that the use of technology in education has been accelerated. We will one day return to in-person classrooms, but I believe that extending our reach through technology is here to stay. The pandemic has taught us the important role technology plays in education, and we have adapted. HCC was recently recognized as a national top 10 honoree in student services for our live virtual lobby, connecting students one-on-one -on -one with advisors. We will be improving our capabilities in this area as it will be a big part of our future. We will one day be able to safely gather in the same room, but for now, we must all make the best use of technology to engage and continue to serve our community. Now, the wither storm taught us lessons, especially the importance of preparation and the skilled trades. Never have any of us been happier to see a plumber or an electrician than in the weeks following the ice storm. And I, for one, am very proud of how we have quickly adapted and instituted change necessitated by the pandemic. I want to thank our Board of Trustees for their continued leadership and support as we navigate the still evolving new normal. I also want to thank our dedicated faculty and staff who worked tirelessly to develop new programs, processes, and protocols to help our students succeed despite the challenges presented. Adapting to change is not a new concept at HCC. We've been at it for 50 years. During that time, we have served the greater Houston community, adjusting and responding to its ever-evolving needs. We've educated hundreds of thousands of students and sent more than 90% to the university or career of their choice. We've worked with area industries to determine what jobs they need to fill, and we've supplied them with a pipeline of skilled and certified workers. When the community called, we answered, and we plan to continue responding for the next 50 years. At HCC, we've trained plumbers, electricians, and other skilled trades. Now, through the pandemic, we've also safely trained the emergency responders, police, firefighters, nurses, and EMTs who keep our community safe. And with our planned Resiliency Operations Center, we'll be able to better prepare even more to serve these important roles. The new center will also offer safe simulated work environments for flood response, power outage, and petrochemical disaster training. Now, as the economy slowed and industry shifted priorities, along with our peers, we saw an enrollment drop, and it is still down. But as we respond to the needs of our students and area industries, we are starting to see a reversal and we expect an increase in fall enrollment. Everything we do is focused on HCC's mission of offering a high quality, affordable education to prepare our diverse communities for life and work in a global and technology dependent society. By offering relevant, affordable and responsive programs and services, we will achieve our vision and shape the future. HCC will continue to play a defining role in regional economic, workforce, and social development. Now, while the past year has been challenging, I'm happy to report that there is good news too. Our faculty, staff, and trustees won many prestigious awards. HCC was named the 2020 Entrepreneurial College of the Year by the National Association for Community College Entrepreneurship and some of our trustees were appointed to serve on national community college committees. Now what an honor and a wonderful recognition for outstanding work and commitment. And most notably, HCC was also selected by the Houston Business Journal for its 2021 Diversity in Business Award. We also received the Certificate of Achievement and Excellence in Financial Reporting, and we started the process of refinancing our bonds eventually saving nearly $100 million over the life of the debt. 
Our Best Academy was honored with the 2020 Team Diversity Champion Award. HCC's Idea Studio earned top 50 honors. We joined the ranks of top marketing schools from which to hire in 2020. And Coleman College was listed as one of the best online medical assistant programs in the country. 2021 is an exciting year for HCC. We're celebrating 50 years and counting of HCC being deep in the heart of Houston. Uh, since 1971, our institution has achieved many things. We've collaborated with local businesses to fuel the workforce pipeline. We've educated hundreds of thousands of students, sending them onto the career or university of their choice. And we've grown as an institution right along with the city we serve. An instrumental partner in our success is the HCC Foundation, who continually steps up to support our students. I want to recognize the Foundation's great work and to thank those who donated to our efforts. These scholarships exceeded $1.3 million this past year, and for many, it was the difference between stopping out and continuing education at HCC. Now, reflecting on our past 50 years actually gives us a perspective of our strength. HCC has been powering Houston's workforce for a very long time. Let's take a quick look at a few of our breakout moments. On May 18, 1971, Houston residents voted to make HCC a component of HISD. During the 1980s, renovation of the buildings on the central campus began. In the 1990s, the institution evolved as a system of five regional colleges plus a college without walls. Near the end of the 1990s, Coleman College became the first and remains the only community college to have a physical presence in the Texas Medical Center. During the 2000s, HCC was ranked the second largest community college in the nation and passed a $1.7 million bond issue to renovate and build new facilities. At the beginning of the 2010s, HCC was educating 74,000 students a semester and ranked number one in the state and number two in the country for awarding two-year degrees and technical certificates. In 2014, we began breaking ground on our $425 million capital improvement project throughout the district. And our move to a shared service, one college structure also began at that time. As for 2020, without you, our community and business partners, we couldn't have gotten through the year. Thank you for everything you did and continue to do to help our students succeed. We will be sharing links to our 2020 annual report as well as our commemorative 50th anniversary retrospective book so you can join us on a walk down memory lane across the milestones over the years. You, our community and education partners and business and philanthropic leaders are how we will continue to bring accessible, affordable education to students. You make it possible to train Houston's workforce for the jobs of today and tomorrow. As for what's next, I am proud to report that the HCC Board of Trustees has approved our comprehensive strategic framework embracing Houston's future, designed to guide our institution forward for the next 50 years. We have developed a highly integrated approach to reaching our goals by focusing on six priorities, student success, diversity and equity, personalized learning, academic rigor, community investment, and college of choice. At HCC, we are committed to equitably deliver relevant, high quality education and training far into the future. In closing, I want to thank the community leaders who shared their insights in the upcoming panel discussion. We are Houston's community college, and we are here to partner with each of the communities we serve to ensure that every student has access to the education and training they need to succeed. Let's work together to make Houston and our students even more successful in the next 50 years than in the past 50. I am confident that the best is yet to come.
Thank you, Dr. Maldonado. Now I'm pleased to share a video highlighting the many ways HCC has been deep in the heart of Houston for the past 50 years. It began as a dream of a handful of community leaders to found a college to train and equip a talented workforce for Houston. In 1971, the dream took life. What they wanted to do was create a community college. And that was led by Eleanor Tinsley, George Oser, and uh, Leonard Robbins, who were th the three board members who were really engaged and involved in the creation of, of the community college. We came up with an idea of six colleges. And I remember, uh, technologically astute son helping me with uh, one of the first computers that, that went to an employee of the Houston Community College structure and divide the city into four segments, north, south, east, and west. It became the north, south, east, and west community colleges. And uh, we had uh, the central campus that became the central college. Determining the path ahead took the visionary efforts of nine community members. These first trustees worked together to determine the college's principal mission. One of the interesting things about being on the first board is we had the opportunity to define who we would be. And as a board of nine members, and we were very diverse, we were far more diverse than other college boards in the region. So we had an, an understanding from very different perspectives. And all of those understandings had to come together in a unified manner to define a mission, to define a vision, and then to work cohesively to make sure that we executed that mission and vision appropriately. Together, a philosophy of inclusion and diversity took life. The college would provide the opportunity for people from all walks of life to have a place to learn and prepare and to flourish. I, I think we all wanted the education system to be better, but those of us who came from economically uh, deprived communities uh, wanted more to see education flourish. We have made a significant difference in the economy of Houston because with us, we not only upskilled we upgraded the population and intelligence of this community. The idea of working creatively with partners to revitalize areas where it was sorely needed was central to the plan. The impact was immediate. National recognition followed. Businesses were formed. Lives were forever changed. We started with a business plan competition because we had a community partner that wanted to revive a part of the city. It was actually the North Spring Branch. The economy there was declining and they wanted to do something to impact the local economy. And that's what, how the business plan competition was born. But on the basis of that business plan and the partnerships that we developed, we won the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Initiative, which was huge. We were the fourth college in the country to win that, that program. We've graduated almost 700 small businesses wow. that have really made, made an impact on the, on the local economy. It wasn't easy, and there were lots of innovative uses of spaces to make education happen in areas previously unserved. When you see how we were birthed as an institution, in all of the many locations where we were, we didn't have the marvelous campus facilities that we have now. Not at all. First, they started to uh, purchase buildings, and it was a gradual process. And as we uh, purchased land for the real estate part, then we also started uh, to build uh, buildings and then from that the rest is kind of like history. This important work continues today as the college provides accessible, affordable, and quality education. I was born and raised in Houston. I've seen the city grow and I've seen, I've seen the challenges that minorities have had in this city and in our educational system. And so because of that, you know, I wanted to, to uh, come to HCC to make that difference. Through it all, dedicated trustees, faculty, and a committed staff have never lost their principal focus, educating students to excel and contribute. 
we grew, we were able to teach our students, we were able to see our students become great successes. And so it's just that passion that has always been there and we've always had dedicated faculty, excellent faculty, committed staff to ensuring that HCC would maintain its rightful place as being Houston's community college. Now I'm delighted to introduce an esteemed group of community leaders for our discussion. Our panelists are Francis Castaneda Dias, President, Houston East End Chamber of Commerce. Carol Guess, Interim President, Greater Houston Black Chamber of Commerce. Bob Harvey, President and CEO, Greater Houston Partnership. Dr. Laura Murillo, President and CEO, Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And Bin Yu, Board Chair, Asian Chamber of Commerce. And thanks to Dr. Kurt Ewan, HCC Vice Chancellor of Strategic Planning and Institutional Effectiveness, also Chief of Staff, for serving as our moderator, Dr. Ewan. Thank you, Todd. And thank you to our community partners who will speak today to the role that HCC has played and helping their businesses and industries, and how our institution has historically impacted the community as a whole. We also look forward to the future as we discuss the upcoming trends and the emerging new normal in a post-pandemic world. So let's dive into the first question. Um, what do you see as, as HCC's impact to the community over the past 50 years? Well, HCC has had such broad impact over these last 50 years but what comes immediately to mind is it's provided accessible, quality, post-secondary education for Houstonians. And it's done so in a way that's made it physically accessible all across the community. For so many Houstonians, having a convenient, easy, low-cost option allows them to begin their college career and whether they complete an associate degree or go on with the UT Tyler program to a baccalaureate degree or go elsewhere to complete their four-year degree, HCC gets them started on that journey. Now, from the employer standpoint, of course, HCC provides a quality workforce. And that's so critical in Houston that we have the skill sets. And we'd rather get those skill sets in the business community from local graduates than from having to import them in from out of town. So HCC has been a great source of great employees for so many years. I don't know what we would do without HCC. Thank you for that. That was very insightful. Let's hear from another one of our panelists. I think HCC has had a phenomenal impact on our economic base here in the city. HCC has allowed people to attend school that wouldn't normally attend school. And so once they've become educated, they're employable, they can contribute to our tax base, uh, crime is lowered. So I think that HCC's impact, its largest impact, is to really make our city a livable city. And, and infuse it with people who have skill sets that can be easily transferred into the workforce. The impact of Houston Community College is one that is very important, especially as we look at economic activity in our region. As you all know, the fact that Houston Community College has campuses throughout our region allows individuals to go out and be part of their great educational experience. We know that in Houston, entrepreneurship and so much more is available through the opportunities provided by Houston Community College. And this will only continue to magnify as we see the number of Houstonians that will take advantage of a great quality education at Houston Community College. Now our next question, can you speak to some trends that you, that you see affecting your members of your, and businesses over the next five to 10 years? Yes, I see uh, um, two major trends uh, uh, from our um, members' business. So we, at the Asian Chamber, we have uh, you know hundreds, hundreds different business owners cover almost uh, different fifteen different uh, industries, and we see the trend. Number one is uh, we see the trend 
uh, needs uh, the skilled workers. Uh, this is a very important. It's not about uh, um, we're not talking about the computer science or engineers or getting the master degrees or uh, bachelor masters. We're talking about uh, technician, uh, but skilled workers who knows how to operate technology. And that's the one trend we see that more and more, uh, especially with, uh, um, we encourage more investment to the US, build the manufacturers in US, and the equipment, machinery, um, all this can, you can, you can invest by, uh, invest more money to buy those equipments. However, skilled worker is not overnight. And that's, that's where we see the skilled worker who need to know how to operate the, the robotic, how to, uh, who knows AI. And those kind of skilled worker we see are more and more important. Um, the second part is uh, entrepreneurial skills, the trend. Uh, we'll see more and more um, business, own, business owners, they are uh, not just a career path with a large organizations, actually they want to be a entrepreneurs, they want to be a business owners. Uh, but how to start, how to get started, how to get educate them, uh, train them, uh, become um, knowledgeable how to manage your business, start up your business, grow your business. So I think that's uh, entrepreneurial skills is, uh, has, has a, uh, we see the trend as well. Well, one trend that comes to mind is this whole issue of reskilling. It's not enough to complete one program and think that's gonna last you the rest of your career. For many, many people, there's a need to go back and gain the new skills that are more relevant in today's workforce. Now, for some, that may mean their previous education just didn't give them that skill set that was immediately applicable in the work workplace. In other cases, the nature of the jobs have changed. So you think today about the digital economy. There are so many new skill sets being required that weren't being taught 5, 10, 15 years ago. So people are going back for the digital skills. But frankly, there's a whole raft of skills out there that people need to gain. And it's all about gaining the skills as you need them, when you need them, for the specific job opportunity you have in mind. Now, frankly, the workforce is more interested in skills and experience than they are in, in degrees. And that's been a shift, that there's been more focus now on skills and credentials, something that would prove that you have the skill set. But degrees still matter, and I don't want to say that they don't. But that's all changing. The diversity of the workforce really matters today in Houston. Of course, HCC really comes into play because they're attracting and training a, a broadly diverse workforce. And companies today want to go to where those diverse candidates are, and HCC is one of those places. Thank you. I believe we have one more comment. I think Houston Community College has a great opportunity to meet the needs of businesses and corporations in our region. Specifically, we know that a lot of training, whether it's in manufacturing, education, computers, et cetera, is available through Houston Community College. The needs of corporations and businesses have changed and will continue to do so. The fact that Houston Community College has a variety of certifications, locations, and experts to provide that much needed training is going to absolutely improve economic opportunities for our region and people who live in this area. Thank you for those insights. Now let's go on to the next question. Our new strategic plan, Embracing Houston's Future, which Dr. Maldonado spoke of earlier in his remarks, was designed to allow us to respond to community needs. How can HCC support the workforce needs of your organization and the greater Houston area as a whole? Well, it's really important today that students come out of HCC with the soft skills. And that's not something we just assume the students have. It's something that we hope and expect HCC will help. Things like teamwork, communication skills, resilience. Those are things that can be taught in the right setting. So the employer community is looking to those soft skills. They're also looking to students that have both the academic training and the relevant experience. So encouraging students to go get that experience while they're studying, while they're going to school. Don't put experience off till the end get the academic training and the experiential training as you go. I mentioned earlier the importance of digital, and digital runs everything from coding to digital marketing to AI and machine learning. We need 
workers today across that broad range of di digital skill sets, and they're changing all the time. And people that may get coding skills today may be coming back tomorrow to get that digital marketing platform. So there's a lot happening of that, that nature, but it's always changing. I really appreciate the fact that HCC works so closely with the business community that what we're thinking today may change and tomorrow HCC will need to adjust. And I know they will adjust. They've, they've been adjusting year by year by year to the changing nature of the workplace. I think HTC continue doing the great work that they're doing, especially under the leadership of Dr. Maldonado. Many of our members really rely on the training that HTC provides their current employees. They rely on the vocational certifications that they give some of the new members that they have to add to their employment. So it's a win-win combination. Our members need great employees and HTC produces great employees. So continue what you're doing and thank you. Thank you for that answer. Do we have any other panelists who'd like to comment? I think HCC can support the workforce needs of our member businesses by just continuing to keep the same tracks of education that you've been known for, which is academics and also trade opportunities. And I would say if you could add and make sure that even on the academic side, that there's a technology component attached to the learning experience, I think that will create a workforce that is ready to go to work as soon as they graduate. And now for our last question. How has your organization adjusted to the emerging new normal in the post-pandemic world and in light of the devastation that we all experienced in the recent winter storm, Yuri? Yeah, that's a, that everybody talk about the new norm. Um, my company is a technology consulting company. Uh, we do the consulting business for uh, many major um, companies in the utilities industry. Uh, we travel 100% uh, all over the countries. All over the countries, we have uh, 300 people travel every day. That's their life. But the new norm is: Do we need to travel anymore in the future? And the answer is: We believe 50% of the traveling required jobs uh, they don't necessary. They can work from home. They can work at a company. Um, in the office, and uh, it's not only we, it's actually, actually our clients. They are used to that, and they, they realize, you know what, I don't need to see you face to face. And so the new norm is both sides, is from us for, as a, a service provider, and also the clients. And both sides need to realize, they realize already using technology, and the new norm is you can work remotely, and as equally effective. Um, the second part we see the new norm, um, is uh, uh, the e-commerce. This is, uh, I think you can think about Zoom, you can think about the DoorDash, you can think about, in Asian Chamber, we have uh, many restaurant business owners and that almost uh, uh, they are transforming themselves from, uh, from you know, just stuck in the, the, the pandemic. They don't know how to continue their business and quickly they, they trans transform to the online business. And many business owners and restaurant owners they are uh, uh, online ordering from 15, 20% to over 50% already. And that carried them through the, the, this the most difficult, uh, the darkest period. Um, and the same thing for many other business, uh, the e-commerce, online business become almost, it's not about the nice to have, it's a mandatory, you have to have that. I think that's a new norm as well. Very interesting. Do any of the others want to jump in on this one? You know, the Greater Houston Partnership has had to adjust just like everyone else to working virtually, working from home. And we've been pleasantly surprised at how successful we've been at being able to do that. We had to recreate all of our events with our members to make them virtual as well. And frankly, we're surprised when we often had greater attendance at a virtual event than we ever had at an in-person event. But we also know we're losing something. You know, some of the cultural development, some of the mentorship and apprenticeship that happens naturally in an office are not happening in this virtual environment. So we look forward to getting our staff back into the office, probably not five days a week, but at least some of the time for that purpose. And of course, the Greater Houston Partnership is about helping Houstonians solve the problems that matter most in this city. And we do that by convening our members and convening others from the city. And it's really hard to convene people who've never met before to solve tough problems, purely virtually. We've gotten better at it. We look forward to a time though when we're bringing people back together physically. Maybe it's a hybrid, maybe people will be online, some will be there physically, but we've got to keep working on it. 
This is a momentous time for Houston. The evolution from an oil and gas economy for a hundred years to a low carbon energy future environment, as we're calling it, is, is an exciting opportunity for Houston, but it's a daunting challenge as well. And I would encourage the students and the faculty at HCC to give serious thought about how this transition is going to affect their futures and how do we position Houston as a leader in the energy economy for the next hundred years like we've always been in the past. This pandemic has caused technology to speed up. We knew we were heading in this direction, but now we're really here. So it's time for our organization to help our member businesses adjust to this new technology online environment. And that's how we're going to assist and adjust in this new emerging business environment. Thank you to each of our panelists for your insights and your institution's partnership with us over the years. Here's to the next 50. Thank you so much. Thanks to our panelists and Dr. Ewan for the insightful discussion. Now I'm excited to welcome Daniel Dilla, HCC Faculty Senate President. Daniel. Thank you so much, Todd. I'm so glad to be here. As President of the Faculty Senate, I have the privilege of representing around 3,000 amazing faculty members at our college. I hope you'll join me in showing them appreciation for their hard work. Those faculty members and all of our students have all been through an incredible year. We all have. One year ago, we shared the state of the college with y'all, deep in the heart of Houston. We were connecting with each other, and we were learning about the incredible impact that Houston Community College has on our region. We were thinking about the 50th anniversary of HCC and appreciating the hundreds of thousands of students we've helped educate, how much good this institution has done, and how far it has come. And in just one year since then, it feels like we've gone through another 50 years. The faculty at HCC always worked to champion and educate their students, but this last year was a banner year for showcasing our faculty members' dedication, their passion, their energy, and their commitment to student success. And we're teaching in a different world now, a world that our faculty helped create through rigorous training and online teaching and innovation in the classroom. Of course, we remember what classrooms used to look like. Desks, boards to write on, overhead projectors, and we saw these go through steady evolutions. The desks accommodate Chromebooks instead of notebooks. The boards use dry erase markers instead of chalk, and the projectors show the computer screen instead of transparencies. But now, our classrooms might look like our students' kitchen table, or a coffee shop, or a library, because that's where they can grab free Wi-Fi or find a quiet space. Or they might look like my bedroom closet, because the hanging clothes really help with acoustics for audio recording. And it's the only quiet spot in a house with kids on Microsoft Teams in the living room taking their classes, and a significant other doing a presentation on WebEx in the dining room. Now, our classrooms won't always look like that, but they won't look like what we remember either. And that's why we're reimagining what teaching and learning look like and will look like in the classrooms of 2031 and 2071. This last year accelerated trends in education, like active learning or problem-based learning or flipping the classroom that we have been doing at HCC for decades, but are now entering mainstream. It's no longer an evolution, but a revolution, and our faculty are leading the way, helping us embrace Houston's future. And to do that, we've ensured our classrooms are equipped with the latest technology, encouraging hands-on learning with our maker spaces, engaging students anytime, anywhere through virtual reality, and instructing students in flexible classrooms with personalized learning strategies to meet students where they are, to help train and educate the next generation of lifelong learners. And while education is always changing, what has stayed constant and what will always remain the same is our faculty members' connections with students. As we evaluate our teaching methods and gather student feedback, one thing that sticks out to me is how much our students value the check-ins, the outreach, and the stability that our faculty members provide them anytime, anywhere. And that's how we engage their critical thinking. That's how we nurture lifelong learners. That's how we help them develop their talents. Those connections matter. Education 
matters. As our economy and our region rebound from a difficult year, I hope we all appreciate how vital education and educators are to that recovery. Even though our classrooms change, our faculty members' passion for teaching and dedication to their student success remains constant. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Now I'm pleased to introduce award-winning restaurateur and HCC culinary arts graduate, Chef Hugo Ortega and his wife, Tracy Vaught. Together, they've created a legendary hospitality brand. They also have a heart for Houston Community College. We're grateful for their support over the years, including their family's generous gift to the HCC Culinary Arts Program to establish the Chef Hugo Ortega Endowment Fund that will provide a future legacy for culinary arts students. You know, back when I came to this incredible country, it was um, just looking for an opportunity. So life is like a box of chocolate, right? Mm -hmm. So becoming a chef, you know, it was those kind of things that lay on my lap. And, um, you know, I can now feel pretty comfortable to say that I never look back. I was just a decent student. Um, Back in those days, I, I don't know if you remember this well, but um, I took some tests uh, to graduate orally because I was not able to, to write English. You know, my head's up to the faculty for letting me, you know, do that at that point in time. In those days, you know, those uh, uh, teachers and maestros, they were incredible. And I can tell you this much, uh, I remember one of them, like, you know, on a daily basis, so I just thinking of then, you know, what would be the best way to approach this recipe or, or to tell somebody, you know, how to cook this dish or... They, in my, in my memories, uh, and, uh, and also in every single day of my life, they're there, so I truly appreciate them. Definitely my favorite thing to cook, it gotta be barbacoa in uh, this incredible state and through the country, we call it barbecue. And uh, that to me is the ultimate um, bio food that you can possibly try. I love to build layer on top of layer on top of layer of food. And my grandmother's mole, it was uh, 21 ingredients, deli mole. And so to me, that is the ultimate challenge. Both my daughter Sophia and I uh, wanted to do something special for Hugo. We felt like he grown himself so much uh, and HCC was a big part of that. So we wanted to recognize that connection and do something special uh, in Hugo's honor. You gotta help the people that need it more than you. And uh, what a great opportunity for me that I can feed one person or I know how to feed, you know, a, a city or a state or, uh, you know, participate on, on whatever it needs to be done to help our community. You know, bringing my energy and, and dedication to the community is my number one priority. And I cannot thank this uh, incredible city to you know, to be where, where we are today. And, uh, and you know, I thank this city from the bottom of my heart. I am I am Houstonian. I'm part of H-Town uh, city, so that is pretty dang good. <laughs> For all of us, uh, you know, life uh, takes different paths. I would tell the students to be passionate about what they do and, you know, don't, uh, pay attention of anything except to follow follow the, the dream and uh, believe in who they are and uh, always go at it with 120 percent with every single ounce of energy in their body and uh, i think that would conduce them to find themselves Thanks so much for Hugo and Tracy for sharing your inspiring success story. I hope everyone has a wonderful day and thanks again for joining us for this virtual event.